thank you guys for joining us today. We have George Ransom and Jordan Crocker of Hall Mile One Auto Group. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We have Jordan in person. We have George on the phone. Um, let's just get this conversation started. How are you guys doing? How did you get into the automotive industry? Tell me about your role at um, Hall and where you guys are now. Sure, I'll go ahead first. Um, my name is Jordan Crocker. I am the internet sales director for Hall Automotive Division. I've been in the automotive industry for about eight years. Um, I never thought I would come into the auto side, but I graduated college and jumped right in. And currently I handle our uh, CRM, so our customer relationship management database. And I also oversee our internet managers in our 17 locations. So um, definitely a big part of the group and on the team. Okay, uh, and I'm George Ransom. I've been in the business for over 30 years, the last 24 of which has been with Hall Automotive. I've held every variable position. And for the last 18 years, I've been uh, the regional general manager or one of the regional general managers for our organization working with seven of the 17 stores in the whole automotive division. Nice. So 17 stores, that's huge. That is, I mean, a very large automotive group. For our viewers, just to get a better idea, tell me about the demographics around you, where you guys are, how your, how your area affects like sales and, and the service departments that surround those 17 stores. Sure. Well, we're uh, in a very large uh, military area. We have every branch of the armed services represented with a base. And for those that aren't in the military, uh, we have a very large population of civil servants as well. So it makes us, for the most part, recession proof uh, and also makes it a pretty unique environment because we have people that live in Hampton Roads that are from all over the United States. So it's uh, pretty interesting, especially in some of our more uh, heavily visited uh, brands that, that cater to the military, like Chrysler, Jeep, Jeep Dodge, and Ram. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting to have an opportunity to, to meet different people and get their perspectives on what's important to them and, and their automotive needs and when it comes to buying a car and driving habits. Do you all have a lot of employees at your 17 dealerships that are are in the cert like the armed services we have a lot of uh, former military personnel and just to be clear we're only uh one division of the mile one organization so there's four other there's three other divisions besides all so our company spans from fort washington pennsylvania which is right outside philadelphia all the way down to charlotte north carolina we have over 70 dealerships in the mile one organization and that really gives us a great perspective in order to see what is happening in other areas of the Mid-Atlantic and how other dealerships are performing outside of Hampton Roads. Perfect. What what trends are you guys seeing in like your area of the country where your 17 dealerships are? And what do you think will change the most in the next year or so? I think that our experiences here and what we see in the business is a you know, direct reflection of everything that's happening in the country. You know, when you look back uh, at last year, uh, you know, with the influx of all the stimulus money, we saw a spike in used car values. We saw a, a spike in purchasing. We've had record setting months consecutively. And, and now, you know, we're in probably the worst of our new car inventory situation. Um, we don't see it improving dramatically for the foreseeable future, meaning the next six months to a year. And you having to be uh, a very good business people as it relates to other aspects of your business, customer pay service, used car sales, collision center uh, servicing. So, you know, we're, we're uh, very adaptable in this business. You know, we've been through recessions and manufacturer bankruptcies and, you know, and, and wars. And uh, so, you know, we find a way to figure it out. That's what good car people do. You're right. What are your thoughts on electric vehicles? Where do you think we're going to be with those in the next several years? It's definitely the wave of the future. In fact, some of our manufacturers have already told us that they will no longer be producing ICE engines after 2030. 
And every manufacturer meeting that I've been to in the last six months has been the primary topic of conversation. So I think uh, in, in by 2030 that electric vehicles will outsell ICE vehicles from a new car uh, perspective. So interesting. Um, okay, so along with the chip shortages, the supply chain issues, there's also a challenge with staffing. Um, how have your dealerships been affected by this? And what are some ways your company works to keep and acquire new staff members? Well, I can't imagine that there's any automotive dealership in the entire country that you could walk into and they wouldn't have a technician position available. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be that need. But on the variable side, we've been very fortunate with staffing and, and with turnover. And it boils down to the simple fact that in spite of any reason you may receive, the only people reason that people ever leave is because of, of income. And when the money doesn't justify um, the, the things that you have to do on a daily basis to be successful in this business, that's when people leave. So staffing on the variable side has not been an issue at all for the last several years from us, but like every other uh, automotive dealer in the country, we could always use more good technicians. I agree. Well, once you add staff, what are your onboarding processes and how do you train the new team members? We actually, George, when we take this one, we actually have yes. um, in, in different portions of our business. We have for sales, we have a sales director where all of our employees that onboard um, meet with them in our class for about a week and a half before they enter into a dealership. And once to get a little bit more of a feel of what working in a dealership is like, the sales. That managers with all of our programs. So there's a lot of support internally once um, they enter into the dealership. And we also have a similar program for service. So we also have a service trainer that does um, a great job training um, all of our ASMs personally until they go into their dealership. And then um, we have a lot of trainers like myself that go around to all of our locations um, regularly to check in with everyone to make sure that they have everything that they need to be successful. So we have quite a bit of support prior to them getting into their dealership and throughout. Perfect. With most car shoppers doing a majority of their research online, how do your dealerships create a seamless experience from web research to call to purchase? Uh, really, that's a question best suited for Jordan. She's our internet director. So Jordan, you wanna take that one as well? Sure. So we definitely saw an increase of customers during the pandemic go online and do a lot more research, um, just a lot more inquiring from the beginning. And we've done a really good job identifying the method of contact that the customer is looking for. Um, you know, a lot of vendors support email, a lot of vendors support calling customers, but we, we try to do, um, we try to call, text, and email the customer until we identify really what they are, how they're looking to communicate. Um, that's where we've been successful in identifying. We also um, send customers videos. So we'll do videos um, on the lot in the dealership, trying to communicate with them. If they're unable to come in, we deal with a lot of out of state. So that's been also a, a big success for us in communicating back and forth with our customers from online in order to give them a little bit more of what they're looking for to save them some time before they come in. Um, we've also incorporated digital retailing that um, we've seen success with as well. Um, with less inventory, I think that's been a little bit more challenging, but um, I can only imagine when we have more inventory what that'll look like for us um, here soon, hopefully. Man, I hope it comes fast. What, what's been your biggest challenge with that? with just the whole like online process? Um, instant gratification, I would say. I think everyone <laughs> just wants everything a little bit more now. So that's been probably our biggest challenge. Um, but we're doing a good job really on both ends. The customers learning the new processes of the dealership as well as us learning how the customer wants to communicate and buy a car these days. So I think we're heading in the right direction with that. Um, but overall, it, it has been a little bit of a challenge, but we're, we're, we're doing a good job through it. Sounds 
communication keeps coming up. So, you know, I know that that's probably one of your bigger challenges. And I think that is just with our entire industry. I mean, we are doing things a lot different than we have in the past. What industry partners have helped you overcome some of these communication challenges? We definitely have call review that's been great um, providing their resources to us. We work hand in hand with CarNow as well um, through online chatting with customers to communicate. So we've opened up that channel over the past couple of years um, for instant communication as well. Um, but I would say, you know, with our e-lead partner, call review and car now, those have been the three that have really been able to streamline a lot of their product in order for us to communicate quicker and more efficiently. That's perfect. So inventory, just to kind of go back to that, that that was an issue and like so many other dealerships, it's a huge issue. Um, have you had issues acquiring vehicles to sell and, and how has call review helped you through that process? George may be best for that one. Well, I'll take part of the acquisition question. So um, it's been virtually impossible to buy cars at the auction using our metrics uh, through the auto and have it make sense for our company. So there's some other avenues that, that, that we use for acquisitions, but the most successful areas we've had for acquisition has been buying at the door through uh, Kelly Blue Book, Instant Cash Offer, and some other sources that, that we use and through vendor partners. The traditional auction, in my, in my opinion, is a thing of the past, are better suited for independent dealers that don't have the fee structure that we have in a larger organization. I agree. So many things have changed recently in our industry. Um, do you find a different, do you find many differences working with different age groups? So, you know, millennials versus Gen Xers versus baby boomers. How do you approach each of those differently? Jordan, you can take that one. Um, well, I guess I would consider myself a millennial. So I would, it's been, um, I think it's, it's a hard question to answer simply for me. Um, you know, my family's been in the car business my whole life. So I've definitely seen it transition um, from how I saw it years ago to how it, how it is now. Um, but I think we have, a lot of hungry people. Um, everybody wants to make money and we've been successful in um, helping people, like George said, coming out of the military. And we have many people that, you know, were in school that have seen success coming into the automotive industry, maybe doing that option instead. So for me, I would say it's been, um, it, it's just interesting because we see all sorts of different types of generations come into the car business. So it's probably harder for me to answer because I, I haven't seen it as long as everyone else has. But um, I would say we have definitely a, a well-rounded group coming into the car business for us at this time. Yeah. And that probably technology helps with your though. Technology yeah, is, right. there's a lot, there's a lot, um, you know, that's where everything's going. So when you have, um, you want to say, boomer, baby boomers in the past that now have to use a lot more technology um, in order to efficiently work with the customer, that's probably um, more challenging than it's been. And you have more um, millennials these days who use Instagram, Facebook, they have all these other um, social media channels. So it's a little bit more they they're a little bit more engaged in those resources that we're trying to use for example like video that i mentioned before um it's a little bit cooler um for those employees to try to tackle that task than um some of our um staff that didn't have to do that years ago it's a good thing that you have just a, like a large scale of the three different generations because then you are able to accommodate any customer of any age that comes into your dealerships. Absolutely, spam, yes. <laughs> spam calls continue to rise every year, causing many to think twice before answering the phone. I mean, I'm guilty of that. How, has, how have the call review products helped your dealership in getting more customers to answer their phones? Call review has been helpful for us. Um, we use a lot of their reporting. We get alerts when customers are um, more high level, and mm -hmm. that's helped. That's helped us really gather, uh, really weed through 
um, our hottest customers. And we, we have a lot of inbound reports that have allowed us to identify customers that are reaching out to us more so than the outbound. Um, outbound tends to be harder. So any customer that's reaching out to us, um, we wanna be on top of quicker and call reviews, been able to really condense um, us, identify which customers are trying to reach us for anything quicker than somebody we're maybe not able to reach right away. Um, but we, we've used those, which has actually increased our KPIs. It's helped us um, stay in contact with customers quicker and get to them in a more timely fashion. Um, spam's definitely something we've been hit with over the past couple of years. Um, and as I mentioned before, trying to utilize all three methods of contact, uh, customers are more, um, they're not prone to answering the phone right away if they haven't recognized the number, but we have, um, moving over to call review, we've seen success in our um, customer response rate. And um, so that's been nice to see over time. And a couple other things with that too, is that we encourage all of our people on the variable side, when they're engaged with a customer to attempt to get the text opt-in while they are on the phone with a customer or in front of a customer, which makes it so much easier to communicate. Let's face it, everybody prefers to communicate by text these days. And we also train our people that when they receive uh, a voicemail and, and you know, I'm the poster child for this. I won't answer my phone typically unless the number's in my address book. Um, assume anytime you get a voicemail that that customer is going to listen to it and leave them a short, compelling message that's going to prompt them to return your phone call. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to adapt to the changes uh, in the society today and how people want to communicate. That's great. How has uncovering new revenue opportunities in sales and service affected your business? And just tell me a little bit about how that's working. Um, I, I really don't handle much of the service side. I'm far more on the sales side, um, but it's, I'm not quite sure how to answer that question, to be honest. <laughs> that's probably more of a question for George at the end of the day. Um, and we can always email George this question after the fact okay. too. And he wants to do a simple question. Um, do you do you work with the sales vision that um, Call Review does? I do, yes. Okay, tell me a little bit about that, how that's been successful for you. Um, I kind of, I'm, I'm learning it, so I kind of want to know a little bit more just about it. Dealers, on sure. a dealership. Sure, so I have, because I have, uh, I oversee all 17 stores, it really gives me a highlight to every location really quickly inbound outbound as i mentioned before we have um we have a, a large portion of where we really like call review um we have customer or we have employee report cards so we can really drill into each each employee to do one-on-one -on -one trainings which has been successful for us if we have any missed phone calls that may have gotten dropped or um any voicemails that we may have accidentally deleted we can go back to everything so it's a really great tool for us to one train to identify and three um, have a mainstream location to be more efficient um, but the sales vision it's given us um, there's helpful tools in there for training as far as clips that they'll give us for best practices they give us um, a lot of like a scoreboard of where we should be versus where we are and if we're ahead of the game or if we have some rooms for improvement and along with that, we do um, one-on-ones with our rep, Greg Vovac, and he and we do um, check-ins with each one of our stores. So very regularly, we take all the information that Sales Vision has, and we do one-on-ones with our general managers so we can see effectively where are we at. Since our last conversation, we've improved 2% on our um, inbound calls and responses if we're gathering enough information. And we've put together this inbound report that we now see every day that um, has information funneled from Sales Vision that has really streamlined um, if we're asking customers for all of their information. As George mentioned, texting is so huge now. And um, a lot of third party vendors are really promoting that, hey, the customer, let us text you. Um, if a customer opts out of texting and isn't able to text with us, mm -hmm. uh, we have we try to use other channels that um, that we can also use with call review. But I think a lot of it has been successful with being able to dive into our employees 
and really hone in by store. Um, that's where I find the most success with it and really identify where we can help each person because um, then collectively the store does better. See, that's perfect because I mean, it really just all goes back to communication. Like the way that your customer likes to communicate, the way that your employee likes to communicate. And, and that kind of reflects on, you know, the, the baby boomers or the Gen X's or the millennials yet. So it kind of ties it all in together. That's, that's awesome. Um, you know, as we're writing this article, is there anything that maybe we didn't talk about that you would like us to mention within this feature? No, not necessarily. I think um, overall, like you said, communication is key. I think everyone's trying to learn each other in 2022, mm -hmm. the customer, ourselves, with everything constantly changing. Um, but at the at the end of things, communication is just key. Technology is going to take us even further. Um, and I think that's where we're trying to um, really identify how we can be ahead of the game compared to our competitors and really efficiently communicating with customers in order to sell more cars. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and just a fun fact too, I came into the automotive industry right out of college too, and I'm in my 20th year now. So once you're in the automotive industry, you don't get out of the, in the industry. Right. So. And I believe that I, I, yeah, it's been, I feel like I've been doing it for 20 already. <laughs> well, this has been a good conversation. I do appreciate it. We will put this article together. We'll send you whatever we have so that you guys can approve okay. it and we'll go from there. We're hoping to get this in this next month's issue. So it'll be a quick turnaround for you. We'll get you something probably next week, early next week. Um, okay. Well, hopefully we're able to answer any... your questions. <laughs> Sorry about yeah, that. <laughs> no, it's all good. I might have a couple extra questions for George and I'll just email him yeah. um, and get those and he could just send us an email back. We don't have to get back on the phone. So that's fine. Okay. Thank you very awesome. much. All right. Talk all to right, you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay.